Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one, the Trinity be with me. God, I need you. Holy Spirit, I already know you're with me. You walk with me. Ever since I was baptized, something happened. I think they call it being on fire for God. I don't know what it is, but all I know is I asked God to change me, make me new, change my desires, and man, he sure did. Not only that, he changed everything else through the process, y'all. Welcome to Grace Ministries USA. Here we put up a daily devotional, guys, and we are trying to do that to help you in any kind of way, whether it makes your life better, whether it lifts you up for a moment to get you to the next moment, whether it inspires you, whether it encourages you, whatever it is, that's our goal to help you, to lift you up, to show you that you are not alone, that God is with you, that you can make it with the simple things of hope, joy, love, peace, these things. When we give our life to God, when we do it in a way where we're not ashamed, when we do it in a way that we are speaking truth to power through God's word, that is real change, everlasting change. And with our devotional, we don't want to leave people behind. We want to help people because we've had people help us. Today's devotional. At the end of the 10 days, y'all, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. Daniel 1 verse 15, y'all. Man, because God's ways are always better. In ancient Israel, the people had a they had a penchant for idolatry, right? They turned to false gods again and again and again. <laughs> they couldn't help it, y'all, kind of like us. So God raised up prophets to warn them. Get it together, man. But they ignored God's warning as we do. And as a result, God's judgment came. We don't want that anymore, man. Let's get right. He allowed King Nebuchadnezzar to conquer the southern kingdom of Judah and carry the people away to be captive in Babylon. Not a good time. Not a fun time to be a Christian or a man of God. Interestingly... Idol worship was rampant in Babylon. In effect, God was saying, you want idols? You got idols. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to find the brightest and best of the young men. He wanted the best of the best from among the captives. So he ordered his chief of staff to bring them into his court and school them in the ways of Babylon. By doing this, in doing so, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king could use them to influence other Jews. If he could get them, everybody else would fall in line. Isn't that interesting? In some ways, it would have been a great honor for them to receive a summons to the palace, right? But in another way, it meant exposure to the great temptation. And in the end... Daniel, Hananiah, Messiah, and Azariah became a part of the king's court because of that. They found favor even in that time, in that situation. This essentially changed the world overnight. King Nebuchadnezzar ripped them away from their families, their friends, and placed them in an environment that was hostile to their faith. It is not unlike people who grow up in Christian homes and suddenly realize they're in a hostile work or school environment. They discovered they're among people who have no interest whatsoever 
in the things of God. They could care less. God who? Kind of like what we're seeing now. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Not only did the environment change for these young four men, but the king changed their names as well. Daniel's name, for instance, meant God is my judge. But his new name, Daniel's new name, Belteshazzar, was attached to a false god. Belhaniah, Mashal, and Azariah received the names Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which also were connected to Babylonian gods. Again, very interesting, trying to degrade, demoralize, and disrespect them. Although the king could change their names, he could not change their hearts. These four young men faced heavy duty temptation. I'm talking about all kinds of temptation. They had the finest education at the most prestigious schools, not to mention access to the most delicious food and wine in the world, I might add. King Nebuchadnezzar also immersed them in a system of false gods and idol worship. Hmm, isn't that interesting? <laughs> you see a theme here with the world, but he didn't consider the fact that they had character. He thought they would cave in and do whatever everybody else did, that they could just do what they wanted and everybody would just play along. Nah, but they were wrong. They were young men of principle. Here's what the Bible tells us about my man, Daniel. He was a bad dude. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and the wine given to them by the king. He asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Daniel 1, 8. We don't know exactly why Daniel refused to eat from the king's table. It could have been many, many reasons. I call it integrity, but... Who knows what he was thinking at the time. It may have been because the foods were offered to false gods. But for Daniel, it was a matter of principle. Imagine that. Morals, principles, ethics, standards. He didn't want to do anything that would hinder his fellowship with God. He wanted to stay tight with the J-E-S-U-S. -S. Daniel and his friends could have compromised very easily. Yes. Instead, they made a stand. And by standing their ground in a seemingly small area, it enabled them to stand their ground in a much larger area later in life. Let's pray. Let's pray that God gives you the courage. God, we pray for the courage to stand strong in the face of of these insane, out of control things that we see all over the world from every possible area of society, from education to government to curriculum, you name it, there is evil rampant everywhere. We need Jesus. We need more of Jesus. We need Jesus back in the school. We need Jesus in the morning. We need Jesus at night. And if you don't know Jesus, my prayer is that you get to know him because he was a man of peace, love, joy, happiness, gentleness, kindness, goodness. Those things come from God, not fear, evil, condemnation, resentment, hate, anger. None of those things come from the Lord. My prayer is that you understand who God is that you understand it is good versus evil. We are in the fight of our life and God needs you to be the hands and feet to reach people for him, to shift culture back to the original intent, which was to have a set of principles, standards, right? That covenant that God made, he made that with Abraham thousands of years ago. It still stands today. This country was built because of God, for God. Israel was built by God. God gave Israel to his people. America is different. This is special. This place was built for God, 
for a purpose. We've gone way, way, way off track, right? So we need to be good stewards of what we've been given and teach people how to live through love, peace, joy, kindness, gentleness, these things. That's my prayer as you go about your week. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for any future daily devotionals. If you need prayer, guys, I link the website down below, Grace Ministries USA. We have a prayer team. We have a worship team. We do praises and prayers. And yeah, God doesn't always answer. But when he does, oh, goodness, it's so special. Sometimes he calls people home. Yes, we all are going to be going there one day. But sometimes miracles still happen to this day if we believe if we ask and if we engage in God's word on a daily basis. That's my hope. That's my prayer. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a great week. Sorry to rant and ramble, but I get fired up when I'm talking about Jesus, my creator, the creator of the universe, everything in it. Oh, I love him so much for what he's done in my life. I'm ever grateful and thankful and just don't feel like I deserve it. So I want to give back and pay back. Thanks for listening. Have a great rest of your day.